Welcome to Career Pathways. My name is Don Bowers, and in this video, we're going to use Kali version 2016.1 to create a custom installation for penetration testers. So the whole concept here is we have a copy of Kali up and running, um, and we want to have a copy of Kali that has a lot of our tools already installed, things like LibreOffice. Uh, I use VMware, so VMware tools is kind of important. I use another program called Gwake. I use X11 VNC. Those are just some real core tools that I use. And I want those installed automatically. So when I bring back another ISO and I install my copy of Kali, I have all those tools already installed. Don't have to go out and get them. Well, we can, in fact, create a custom installation. And this, of course, would be primarily for penetration testers. However, uh, what you're going to see here in a few minutes is, is that, that it's also for the forensic community, uh, for somebody just wanting a partial copy of Kali. You can actually make a custom copy now uh, for your uh, use. So with this, we're going to, first of all, get a couple of build scripts for Kali. Uh, we simply need to... Um, um, run a couple of scripts and it's going to download a bunch, uh, basically two of them. It will download uh, several things. It'll create some directories for us and kind of set things up. Then we're going to want to go ahead and con configure some installation to auto install certain applications. Again, um, open VMware tools, desktop, Fuse, Gwake, the LibreOffice, X11, uh, VNC, those types of things. Then, of course, once we do all that, we will run the script. Once we run the script, it's actually going to create an ISO image. And once it creates that ISO image, we will move that ISO back off of the virtual machine and we will boot to it and install another copy of Kali. We'll mount that new ISO and we will do a fresh install. And what you'll find is uh, when we install that new copy of Kali, all of our tools will be there. We'll verify the tool installation. We'll take a look at things like LibreOffice, and we'll, of course, go ahead and configure Gwake and things like that. Um, so uh, that's uh, how we're going to work with the configuration for penetration testers. And uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started creating a brand new copy of Kali with all the cool things that we want to have running in Kali Linux. So here we are back on Kali Linux, and this is the f same version of Kali, the same instance of Kali that we installed in the first video. So nothing has changed. We still have Gwake up and running. There it is. We still have uh, LibreOffice up and running and all those kind of cool things. The only thing is I've, I have copied over a document that has some scripting information that we're going to use. So per the introductory video, we need to run two commands that are going to download and create some subdirectories and so forth for us underneath our user accounts. Let's make sure, first of all, that we are, in fact, um, underneath our root folder. And we are, so you see everything like you would normally uh, see it. And so I'm going to go ahead and back out of this for a second. Now, because we're doing a video, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to choose a different workspace, just so we can keep the script up while we mess with it. But you'll be able to uh, remember this the copy of Gwake we have running is kind of opaque, and I don't want you to get confused with what you're seeing on the screen. So I'm going to open up my, my uh, Documents folder, and here's the script I want to use. Now, this is not the script. This is just the instructions, okay? So the first thing I want to do is copy this line of code right here. This is an app get install curl get live dash build dot um, 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 CBE bootstrap. Uh, and I'd rather than have to type all that in, I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to go over here to another workspace. So I'll click on workspaces over here. And most of you should be aware of, you know, that you can do this get to the right workspace. Go to my second workspace. I'm going to press F1 to load my Gwake. I'm going to right click. I'm going to paste this right in. So this one is going to actually go get um, the live build bootstrap information. And it's got it already. How cool is that? And then I want to run another script. So let me go back over to my other workspace. Whoops, wrong key. I apologize. That happens sometimes. Let me go to my other workspace. And I will go down here to this one, and I'm going to grab the second line, which is a git clone process for the uh, uh, livebuild.org. So we're going to copy this, and again, we'll go back over to the uh, other workspace. We'll 
click on our GWAIC, and I'm going to go down here and run this as well. Between these two commands, and this again is git clone and then git, uh, uh, git uh, cali.org uh, live build config. Uh, and this, so this is going to load all the files we need. So you're going to see that because I ran these two tools or these two commands, you're going to see another folder now, and it's actually called live build config. So I want to go ahead and go into live build config. I'll type in cd space live build config and I'll do an ls and what I want is I want to go into one called kali.config. That's a folder. Oops. Do it the easy way by using a tab key. Then I want to go into one called variant default. So I'll type in cdv and then D for default. So there's my CD variant dot uh, dash default. Underneath that, there's one called package list. And there's package list. And in package list, there's actually a file called Kelly list char root. And that's what I want to edit. So I'm going to go ahead and go into, and I can either do gedit or gnome. I'm probably going to go ahead and go into gnome, just or uh, uh, nano, I'm sorry, just because I think it's easier sometimes. I'm going to type in nano, and then I'm going to type in uh, live, and it will pick up the live build, I think. I'm uh, sorry, Kali. There it is right there. And so here's my copy of nano. So what I want to do now is I want to do a couple things. So first of all, this is set to Kali Live Full. By default, it's um, going to be set to this top one. Um, I'm sorry, it is set to Kali Live Full. That's that's the default. I want to actually set this to Kali Live All. And the reason I use Nano is because of the cursor. I'm going to go ahead and put a pound sign here. And I'm going to go down to All, and I'm going to take out this pound sign. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually load a copy of Kali All rather than Kali Full, which means that this particular distribution of Kali is going to load everything it possibly can, uh, not just what's on the CD. And you'll see really the CD is probably about 4.8 gig when we're done. Uh, and the CD normally would be about 2.7 gig. So this lo loads a lot more stuff. Then the other thing I want to do is down here underneath where it says Kali GNOME Desktop, there's some programs I want to load there. And I'm just going to go back over to my other workspace real quickly and grab those just because I have them already listed and it makes it easier. So I want to do Open VM Tools Desktop. I want to do one called Fuse. Those two kind of go together. I want to do Quake. I want to do Vel Evasion, Vel Catapult. I want to do Open Office. And I see an error there that I'm going to fix because this would actually cause the program to crash and then my LibreOffice. So I have those now. Those are what I want. I'm going to go ahead and do a control C. And I'm going to go back over to my other workspace and press my tab key or my uh, get back into nano, right click and paste those in. So what we have, and I need to just do a couple of changes because I pasted these out of a Word document. And in in Wake or in uh, GNOME, um, I'm sorry, I'm just having a, a, a brain burp. In gedit, this would not have happened, but in um, Nano, it does. So I want to make sure that all the spaces are taken out. So this is the command structure that I've now given. I want Kali Desktop known to be installed. I also want these other applications. I want Open. Uh, VM tools, so that's going to be VMware tools, and Fuse, and Quake, and again, Evasion, Catapult, X11, and LibreOffice. I also, again, I'm going to do a full or an all install rather than a full install. So once I've done this, I can go ahead and save this document. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, a Control O. It says, where do you want to save? I'll go ahead and save it as the exact same file name. Obviously, if you change that, it would not be good. And I'll do a, a Control X. And that gets me out of the GNOME desktop. Then I'm going to go back a couple directories all the way to Kali config. And we should see one there called build. Let's go back one more. We should see build.sh. So there's a command I need to type in there. So I'm going to go ahead and go back over to my other uh, workspace. 
and I'm just going to grab that because the command is kind of long. Here it is. It's not really that long, and I could type in it if I wanted to, but let's just grab it since it's here. This is the command that we use to actually run the script. It's going to make all of this magic. So I'm going to go ahead and press the key there and hit paste. So you can see it says dot build.sh, and it needs uh, a couple parameters. It needs the one that says distribution Kali rolling. That tells me we're going to grab the rolling distribution, and we're going to do a verbose. You don't have to have verbose on there if you don't want it, but I usually do because I want to see everything that's happening. And if this fails, you can actually go to a build.log and take a look and see why it may have failed. So if you put programs on that list, for example, I know if I put Tor on there, if I put um, some of the other applications we installed in the first video, if I put those in there, it could cause this to fail. So I'm not going to do that. It's just not that big a deal when I bring a copy of Kali up to just run a couple quick programs that I want to install as well because uh, they take, what, maybe two minutes to install everything. So I know I've, the programs I have here will work and it will not fail. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter, and you can see the process has started. This process will take a couple of hours. Uh, it has to do a lot of downloading. And again, if it does fail, you can look at a, a build.log file, and you can see why it may have failed. I've had this fail once before, and the reason it failed is because it was trying to load an application it couldn't find. I think that was like uh, Preload or one of those other apps. And since it could not find the app, it could not continue. So if this is going to do anything weird for any reason, it will fail. This, again, takes a long time. You can sit here and watch it. You'll see some really cool things come across the screen, a bunch of dots with numbers and several sets of those. And, uh, again, about two hours later, this will this will be done. I've got really good bandwidth here, so the download is actually pretty, pretty quick. Um, and that's kind of how this works. And I will see you guys in the next video. We'll take that ISO uh, file that gets built. We'll bring it across to another machine, to another version of Kali or an instance, and we will actually install that copy of Linux. And you will, of course, see then that all the applications we present, uh, GUIC and um, VMware tools and all that stuff will be there ready to go. So every time you use that CD or DVD to load your copy of Kali, everything will be there. And again, this is not just the normal stuff that comes on a regular CD. This is going to grab uh, the Kali all install. Uh, and you can do that with an app get, but it takes a while, right? Well, this is actually going to be embedded right into the CD for us, or in this case, a DVD. So with that said, I will see you guys back when this thing finishes. So we can see uh, after this is run for quite a while, probably about two hours is what it took. You can see that it has indeed finished. It brought me back to a prompt. I did an ls, and I see a bunch of new files and folders here. The one I'm really interested in the one is the one that just says images. So here's some image prep and stuff like that, right? Well, the one I'm really interested in this folder right here called images. So I'm going to do a cd space images. And you'll see now I have a log, and I also have an ISO called Kali Linux rolling amd64.iso. So now what I'm going to do is actually copy that over to my desktop. I'm going to boot a fresh copy of Kali Linux. I'm going to install that copy of Kali Linux. And then before I boot into it for the first time, I will bring the video back online and we'll take a look and see exactly what got installed and what did not. But I assure you, if any of the packages had an issue with installing, the, air, the thing would have aired out and dropped me back to a prompt. And so since I have the ISO image, I know this thing's going to work. And so let's go ahead and see exactly what we have now with this image. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, stop the video, and I'll come back when I have this thing rebooted. So here we are back on Kali Linux. This is the new install. I called this Kali Full or Kali All. I think I actually named it Kali Full, but this is the All. So this has everything that came on a CD plus everything else that can come with Kali. So the CD is actually quite a bit bigger. That's the kind of install we did, remember? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and log in as root with towards the password. And you should see, first of all, of course, that's just kind of just moved on us, right? 
Um, and I know that you're seeing part of my screen. There's nothing I can do about that. But when this comes up, you're going to see that the um, VMware additions or VMware tools should automatically be installed. I'll resize the screen here in a minute. Um, there it comes up. So let me resize this. I know that's ugly for the video, but there's not much I can do about that. I did want to show you the login, and hence that's why that happened. But you can see that the VMware tools did, in fact, install. This is a fresh install. Nothing in downloads, for example, where my other documents were. However, I should be able to go here to, uh, well, first of all, let's just hit F1, F12, one, F actually, because GWAIC should be installed. In fact, GWAIC is installed, but probably not running yet. Okay, so if I hit F12, nothing's going to happen. So if I, however, if I go in and start GWAIC, so I still have to configure some things. There's GWAIC terminal, and it is up and running. As you can see, it's starting right now. And once Quake is up and running, I can go ahead and configure it the way I want, which is kind of cool. So now if I press F12, I will get Quake. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to properties or preferences. I'm going to tell it to go ahead and start in full screen mode. And again, I didn't have to install this. It actually installed all by itself. I still do need to configure it though, so I want to make sure you understand what the limitations are. The software I wanted did get installed, but it still has to be configured. So I'm going to go ahead and configure a few things in Quake like I did before. There's that, there's that. I'm going to go ahead and go over here to the keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and press F1 for this one and F2 for this one. That's all the stuff I need to do to get Quake to run. Uh, we'll go ahead and save this. It actually, it already saves. If I go into Quake and I type in exit, and then I run Quake again, well, it, at reboot, it will come up full screen. It's not coming up full screen now, but on reboot, it will come up full screen. So that's working. Uh, let's see if LibreOffice installed. So if I go in and type in write, there's LibreOffice is write. So everything installed just as I indicated that I wanted it to. Um, not every application uh, will install, for example, you know, uh, again, we talked about that earlier. Not every app will install, but the ones I installed will. Uh, my guess is Veil Evasion installed just fine. In the next video, we're actually going to install, uh, go ahead and uh, configure, really, Veil Evasion installed, but it still has to do some downloading and check for dependencies. We'll go ahead and do Veil Evasion and we'll go ahead and do probably duck encoder, which is for the uh, USB rubber ducky from Hack5. We'll also do one called Easy Creds. Uh, and we'll go ahead and install some of those other penetration testing applications that I might want to install if I were, of course, doing penetration testing, which is kind of what this video series is about. So I will see you guys back uh, in the uh, next video, which will be the third in this particular series.